cards against the aristocrats. It takes them a little while to get a non-human onto the field. And so we see the no will come across for one. Going to be able to put Josh down to 19. Counter goes on. And we'll see if Jeremy has a follow-up here. Ooh, he doesn't look like he has a second uh, land, man. Look at me, I nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Between one and three mountains, four and six spells. Dang. Silverblade Paladin in the draw here. Pretty awkward with the double blood crypt draw. Yeah, we have, it looks like no white, yeah, we got nothing. He has no white source mana. He does have a Skirt Stack High Priest in his hand, but I don't yeah. know if that's worth paying two life for, especially when it can't block right away. Right, and it's, I, I don't think you pay two life. In fact, I would be entertaining the option of, you know, conceding this game early after like a couple more turns, uh, just to get my opponent thinking I'm on like Black Red or Jund or something. Probably Jund is like the easiest read to trick him into. Sure. Uh, maybe, maybe get him sideboarding wrong. It's, it doesn't seem very likely that we're gonna be able to win this game. Josh is going to fight for it. Yeah, he's going to take two. He's going to play a Skursack High Priest. He's going to pass the turn back. So that, I mean, that's not, that's not a full giveaway of what that game no. is because, because the Aristocrats only plays two of that card. As we do see the Cackler and the Noble come across, but it can definitely get the gears turning for Jeremy about what that Josh is playing. I would expect Jeremy to be able to figure out this point. Wow, I mean, he, he hit his land and Jeremy missed his, so that's yeah. actually a pretty big game. Josh might be able to make something happen here. Now the Cavern can't cast Orzhov Charm, which I'm pretty sure he's going to want to turn on real soon yeah. at some point to let him uh, you know, kill a guy and trigger more of it. Oh, he's announcing we you pass turn before the counter so you don't get the counter or some, something like that. Looks like they're just trying to get the damage exactly where it's okay. supposed to be. Okay. Are they, uh, I see. They want to make sure I think he might have took the guy one far too far or something like that. Uh, but now... I mean, we're still in actually pretty bad shape. I think we have to just like play maybe Champion of the Parish instead of Cartel Aristocrat. That sounds gross though, yeah. right? But like, I think we're gonna hope to draw uh, you know, uh, Isolated Chapel or something like that and be able to play two spells next turn. There's your counter souls. Likely gonna be naming human. That's a good read. Thank you. <laughs> That's why they hired me. That's why I get the big bucks. So now Josh's options here are, are Doomed Traveler and Cartel Aristocrat, it looks like. And it looks like he is oh, going Doom to okay. sell up. I like the Doomed Traveler here. Let's you get two blocks, since you get to block the uh, Cackler, and then the Spirit can block the Noble, plus the Doors of Charm, eventually maybe getting you an additional uh, variation on that particular sequence. You see Josh come across for one with the High Priest, not going to do him anything else. Mm -hmm. Jeremy's going to draw a card. Jeremy misses again, draws a Vexing Devil for the turn. Ah, well, at least he has spell this time. That's true. And here he comes. Now, it's interesting here, Glenn, if he does want to chump block or not. The main reason I say that is because he does have the Aristocrat in his hand. So he can take the four and go down to nine. Or, take the, excuse me, take the five, go down to eight. And then the next turn, play the Aristocrat, sacrifice the Doom Traveler, make a Demon Token. Okay, yeah, no, that's a good line. Uh, I honestly hadn't th thought about that one. And so now we see Vexing Devil. Now, this is where things get a little bit more problematic here because Josh is at eight and does he want to go down to four? That's a tough that's a tough thing to do. I actually think you just let it ride. Sure, you got a four three. He's about to make a two two that he's planning to A give pro red and B also use to get a five five next turn. So it's one of the less impressive Vexing Devils I've ever seen. Sure. So what to do, what to do. Got to use that life total as a resource here if you're Josh Tannen. Yeah, I say you let it resolve. You stick your aristocrat in an in a ideal world. You draw Isolated Chapel, and you also get access to Orzhov Charm. <laughs> so. In a perfect world, that's what will occur. What if it's a godless shrine? Take two, whatever. Here's the draw. It the is. Man. Cartel Aristocrat's not the worst. Aristocrat, yep. I mean, any castable spell for Josh is a pretty good draw sure. when you're on five cards against your mana screwed opponent. Unfortunately, it is all too common that screw tends to beat flood, uh, and it's even more so when the flooded player has a mulligan. Yes. So Cartel Aristocrat does join the party. Josh is going to pass the turn back, and we're going to see if Jeremy knows exactly what Josh can do this turn as far as interactions are concerned. Yeah. Jeremy finally draws a land. He draws a mountain. Oof. And you see him tapping mana right away and Volcanic Strength. Oh no, we've been punished for our Vexing Devil's resolution. 
All right, that the worst mixing double I've ever seen just rapidly became one of the best mixing doubles I've ever seen. <laughs> he, can he, he can hear you. Quick shift. So now you see Jeremy asking, basically waiting, is this okay? So here comes, here comes the noble, and the vexing devil, and so Josh can, yeah, Josh can snipe the noble and get it dead. Yeah, just eat that guy. I think Jeremy might have missed the interaction. Uh, doesn't really realize that a five-five demon is on its way. Yep. So sack here. I'm gonna get a spirit token. He looks pretty so, spirited. I'm gonna make a guy. We'll get our judges to uh, to get on the, the tokens. I don't know if we have a demon in there, though, to be honest. Uh, tis, tis, tis. I, I don't stock it. I, I don't know. Now, whoever's on stocking the oh, tokens. We've got a nod from the director. Demon present. Lucky. you got to be ready for the aristocrats. So demon's going to be able to snipe off that strong for noble, but it's going to put Josh at two, and it's going to force him to draw either a planes or a... Uh, an isolated chapel. Well, at this point, uh, is there anything you can draw to beat a 6-5 mountain walking vexing devil? Like, he can't Orzhov charm it. He'll just die. So, I, he may just be straight up dead on board. Right? That's a frown town. Or, de like, dead, no outs? Oh, I see nothing. I guess tragic slip? No, I'm sorry. We have the one tragic slip. Yep. We're on a one-outer. We're live. I should have known. Sam would never let you be not live in this situation. <laughs> That's true. Always wants to have one somewhere in the deck. So now, the demon token. Aha, uh -huh, you were... Whoever told you we had a demon token lied to you. Oh. Director Choi. Shame, 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 shame. Dropping the ball. So Noble bites the dust. Josh is going to move down to two, and it's Tragic Slipper Bust now, it looks like. Untap, draw. Be there. Josh, one time dealer, draws. Not even, Not even for me. me. Mm. That was anticlimactic. Yeah. I mean, it was black, so, it, you know, kind of close. Now Josh is doing math, trying to figure out if there's any way I can potentially kill him, and there's not, and he's going yeah. to concede the game. So, Jared. more than two? Mm. <laughs> Jared Fukowski up a game with Mono Red, stuck on one land for a while there. Josh almost able to stabilize and start taking that game over, but Volcanic Strength. Uh, too good. Uh, too, too good, good is a strong term. <laughs> I, think, I think good enough is probably significantly more. Simply accurate. too powerful. Now, I know that you do have the Risk Crest Necklace in front of you before Josh. He's going to be playing first this game. What's he got in the sideboard? Uh, well, he's got Blasphemous Axe, which I actually think are pretty fine against the, uh, the Mono Red deck, especially if you're, it, when it lets you, you know, about Vexing Devils resolve if you've got stuff holding them off. That's true. Uh, he also has access to additional Tragic Slips to perhaps increase his outs in the future. I imagine he'll have to bring them in now that he's seen those mechanic strengths, uh, knows that he needs these removal spells that can actually kill a creature once it's enchanted. Uh, in addition, he could go with Obzet Ghost Council. It's a little unconventional, but it's a fatty that gains life. So it can avoid j giving Jeremy the opportunity to peel on him. Okay. They get to a you know, stalemated situation, but Jeremy's at a higher life total. Over the course of three turns, Obzak can make sure that Josh doesn't get top decked on, whereas otherwise he just has to cross his fingers and hope the Brimstone Volley is never there. But it's always there. <laughs> it's always there. Uh, beyond that, I think the interesting cards are like maybe additional Soren, uh, Lingering Souls, probably for sure coming in on Lingering Souls. And Duress is kind of a weird one. Uh, I think if he knew that Jeremy was white red with the Boros Charms and Volcanic Strengths and Brimstone Bombs and Searing Spears, then you might consider the dresses, but I'm not a big fan of them. So. And taking a look at what Jeremy's got here as far as things against the Aristocrats, he has Blasphemous Act of his own, but I don't think he's going to want to bring those yeah, in here. Seem very good. A um, couple copies of Museum Mortars, which are okay, but nothing spectacular. Bonfire of the Damned can actually be pretty good here. Yeah. Uh, four copies of Skullcrack, three copies of Graphicker's Cage, and two copies of Zealous Conscripts. Nothing jumps out at you here as, a, as cards that are really very good against the Aristocrats. Unsurprising, because I can't think of a, a card in a sideboard that just says, Hey, Aristocrats, I'm here yeah. to beat you. Uh, if you look at his main deck also, though, you know, like what card's really bad against the Aristocrats? That's true. Uh, I'm not sure what he would want to side out. You know, Bonfire is the one yeah. card that, to me, I mean, Volcanic Strength is, is actually good here, so I don't know if he wants to sideboard those out, but Bonfire is one of the cards here that I think can actually turn a game around. Yeah. I don't love it in Mono Red Strategies or decks without Farseek or ways to accelerate, but this is one of the few cards I think that can actually turn things around for him dramatically. Um, 
in a right in in a in a certain situation. Uh, I might be interested in cutting down on my cacklers, especially when I'm on the draw. Okay. Uh, when you're facing off against Trampy of the Paris, Doom, Doom Traveler, and Cartel Aristocrat, the two-two that never gets to block is not looking that great. Yeah. So, uh, I, I might look at, to trim those at least on the draw, and that's probably a reasonable spot to get in room for Bonfire. I, I don't think he wants anything else. Uh, the Skullcrack's not going to do anything. Mortars is a pretty inefficient spell against Aristocrats, especially when the deck has multiple ways to actually ensure a creature doesn't die. Uh, so that, that's probably where I would head with it. All right, well, we do see both players finishing up their sideboarding here. I forgot what they're going to do. I mean, I can't really tell if this is a matchup that favors the Aristocrats or Mono Red. I mean, ideally, when Sam was building this deck, I'm sure that the first thing that came to the top of their mind was, hey, these Psycho decks and these Foothold Board decks that are being tweeted, we got to be able to beat those for the Pro Tour. So ideally, they're pretty good against against mono red strategies and red based ag aggressive decks. So you would think that they're pretty good against this deck. You know, Mulligan to five can be ignored. That's magic. It happens. But you know, how good are they against these mono red strategies? That's that's a that's a big question. Yeah, I I think they seem okay actually. Uh, the more the more I think about it, what's interesting is you know which direction is Josh going to take it? Because you can be a, a pretty aggressive deck yourself. You know, lean heavily on your humans theme. That's exactly what Tom did against uh, Melissa in the top eight of the Pro Tour. You know, he switched his deck to be much more aggressive than it was before. Uh, but the deck can also sit back, play a little bit of a control game. Uh, against Mono Red, it can be really tempting to... <laughs> we, got a, we got a harsh a yep. heart from Josh. Yep. Uh, it can They're be tempting nice. to just automatically go the control route, but if you can actually block and attack at the same time, then you're going to do pretty well against Mono Red. That's one of the reasons Geist decks have always been so good against Red decks. Like, they just can't beat a Geist. They just get attacked to death so easily that yeah. they can't defend themselves. Yeah. Horus Reckoner, a uh, very similar problem, you know, likes a card that as soon as you play it, like, throws the brakes on them and also lets you shift into the really aggressor. Sure. So we do see both players shuffling up here for game number two. If you guys are just joining us, Cedric Phillips, Glenn Jones here in the booth. Star City Games Open Series here in beautiful Las Vegas. Glenn. And I had a wonderful dinner yesterday. We did. We did have a wonderful dinner at uh, Lotus of Siam. Yes. With, with Dave Williams as our food guide. Well, I had Dave Williams as my food guide. You were at a different table. I had Eric Sunday. Froelich as my food guide. Okay. And if okay. you've seen Eric and Dave, Eric is bigger, so I think my food guy is better, <laughs> personally. I don't know. All I remember is that we had some awesome catfish on the table, and you looked over and said, what's that? So... <laughs> So Well, I ate so much that my entire body hurt, so I think that I did yeah. pretty good last night. And Dave, nice enough to use his celebrity status to keep open an ice cream store past clothes for us little, yesterday. That was a little impressive, you know? I mean, that's not a lot of weight to throw, but that's, uh, that's okay, hey, you know? Hey, it was um, insane. I, I know. I've, I don't think I've seen weight thrown in such a fashion before. What was it? Sweet Temptation? What was Sweet that? Addiction. Sweet Addiction. Sweet Addiction. Uh, you can actually find them on Twitter. I think it's like Sweet Addict LB. Yeah. I think that's their Twitter handle. I only know this because Dave celebrated it on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I believe that's it. So, and delicious. Yeah, they, they just make cookie sandwiches. Just ice cream between two cookies. Warm cookies. Essential. Yes, key. Yeah, key. I'm pretty sure it's at about like 80% worse than not warm. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, so we so. do see take, we do see Josh taking another mulligan here. While Jeremy's gonna keep good guy that I am, I'm sure I'll tweet out that picture of the ice cream sandwich that I got. Birthday cake ice cream, what along a with two different spirit. yeah, with two different <laughs> cookies. I'm only tweeting it so I can think about eating it again later this weekend. Oh man, it was a ride. But it was worth it. Uh, incidentally, I'm pretty sure birthday cake was the correct call, having gotten birthday cake myself. Uh, I can't imagine anything that would have been better, so it was probably correct. Oh, just because you got it right. That's why it was true. No, it just tasted insane. Yeah. <laughs> like, what could have been better than that? Nothing. All right. It was funny. Actually, we ordered two soups at our table because I, I'm a wimp when it comes to spices. And Dave said the soup would be, like, way too spicy on the level that they get it. So, you know, they got me a more mild soup. And as I'm eating my soup, I'm like, geez, this soup is pretty spicy. If that, if this is, like, the light one, I can't imagine what that thing's like. Like, it was, you know, all verging on uncomfortable. Uh, it turns out I was just eating the wrong soup. <laughs> 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 there were multiple times I'll just say this I had to ask the waiter for multiple napkins and lots of glasses of water last night but it was worth every bite the pain that I went through as Josh the, the look on Josh's face right now is what, that, that was the look on my face while I was eating dinner yesterday it hurt but it was good but I don't think for Josh oh. this is very good well, he's, he has a land he has you know lands of okay. color All right. okay well we do see and a godless shrine and a champion of the parish so maybe yeah. maybe a bluff Maybe he was thinking about how he wants to play this hand. Does he want to tap land on turn one or not? 
Like, how does that affect his sequencing? Does he want to try and be aggressive? I see, I think, a champion knight of infamy. So it's possible he's thinking, all right, I'm just going to try and kill this guy. I think he has a Boris Reckoner, too, which is, you know, the nut curve out. <laughs> and now we are going to see a Strong Curve Noble. So both players have their best one drops available. Josh going to take a draw step here. Finds a Sacred Foundry. We do see a Cartel Aristocrat in his hand as well. And Reckoner and Knight. And Knight of Infamy. Okay, so his draw is perfectly reasonable. Yep. And he can take that aggressive approach that you did bring up during the sideboard. And the question here is, do you take Knight uh, and get in three, or do you go for the Aristocrat? I, I actually don't know. Like, I assume it's just like automa an automatic decision once you've played like, five games with the deck, but obviously I'm not in that camp. Sure. Uh, right. Josh, he's definitely got five games in, so he's <laughs> yes. going to go with Knight of Infamy. Yes. I'll and trust him. So he does move down to eight, or excuse me, to 16 to be able to do that, and you're going to see Knight come across. His ultra trigger is going to happen, and Jeremy's going to move down to 17. And let's see what Jeremy can do outside of obviously making his strong Kirk Noble a little bit larger. Does he have a volcanic strength to really up things here? Yeah. He does not. So Noble's going to come across. Going to put Josh down to 15. Noble's going to move up to a 2-2, and we'll see what Jeremy has for the second main phase. Interestingly, because he's on the play, Josh will be able to get a Boros Reckoner down before Noble can trade with it, yep. which is uh, you know, a pretty big deal. So now we see a Vexing Devil here from Jeremy. I'd be pretty tempted to let it land once again. I, I feel like our hand's very good, and we can actually outlast that card with Reckoner. We might have to you know, bust one of our creatures in, under Aristocrat maybe to do it. Like... It's a little bit scary every time that card's on the stack. There's always a decision-making process that you have to go through. And, uh, and we know in Josh's hand as well that he does have another Ravnica duel in his hand. So to, in order to cast that Boris Reckoner, he's going to have to take some damage. Uh, like, if I'm Josh, my ideal turn is actually probably the, tap the duel and play the Aristocrat, like not take the two, I think. Uh, like, I'm, I'm okay with that sacrifice. Yeah. I think also taking the four here is interesting because, you know, you have to do it without knowing whether your opponent has a one-drop or not. Yep. Which, very real danger. So now he's going to go with the Rakdos Cackler, and it looks like he is not going to unleash that, which is a little bit of a surprise here. So he's decided to shift uh, tempo a little bit. Uh, I, think, I think that's fine. We drew an Orzhov turn, which is probably better than Cartel Risk. I just play it, kill that Noble. Uh, I assume that our opponent is planning to block if we attack. Like, why else would he have, you know, not unleashed his guys? So yeah. I would just jam both guys, offer the trade with Knight, I think. And take care of that Noble and go down to nine, and then play yeah. your dual land tapped and move along. That seems fine. Let's see if he's going to take a different route. I mean, the, the more clear-cut route is just it just untap Sacred Foundry in with Boris Reckoner. Right. He's going to play it. He's going to play a risk okay. first. Okay. Interesting. So that's going to make that bigger. I guess he's just going to let him jump block then. That's his plan. And now he's going to come across here. Like, yeah, snap jump. Okay. So he's okay with taking another hit here from the... Uh, from the noble. See, the problem is here. If now, if we draw a land, we're in a we're in a good spot. But if we don't, we're in a really awkward one uh, because we'll just have to like turn our Boros Reckoner into a like a searing blaze, basically. Yeah. So now you see a vexing devil, and what they what, what Josh doesn't know, Glenn, is that um, excuse me, Jeremy has two more vexing devils in his hand. Uh, I think the second one we might want to sack for the first one we very easily allow. Okay, he's gonna go ahead and let them both. That's fine. I think it's close. Josh going to take a draw step. Draws Doom Traveler. So uh, It is a good card, but we're just slamming Reckoner this turn. Yeah, that, that's definitely where this turn begins. Uh, I'm actually, you know, we've got some interesting attacks. We can attack and see if he wants to double block and trade off a Vexing Devil, which would probably be very good for us. But if we make that attack, I would attack with someone else first. Well, here's your Doom Traveler. And that's going to uh, bring that guy up to a 4-4. Four -four. Yeah, this play is very nice. Exactly. He's going to make this attack, see if... Uh, Jeremy wants to trade two Vexing Devils for Champion, and if he does, he's going to Orzhov turn one of them. And if he doesn't, then he's going to probably Orzhov turn Stromkirk Noble, or maybe even his own Doom Traveler. Sure. After uh, blocking, just get it back. He can make a Spirit to jump the Noble for the turn, which is nice, because we do not want that guy turning into a 4 Yeah, that's the last thing that you do. Yeah. Work. At a minimum, we're charming it, or a Devil, or something. Josh doing some math. Volcanic Strength, uh, that's not going to result. I, I had a feeling. You sure about that? I'm pretty sure. That was the card if you're Josh you have to be scared of. Right. And the charm is definitely backing him. And you know, it, 
And now it just looks like a perfectly played set of turns. You know, he's like, oh, yeah, of course I have the charm on the one turn where I need it. It's the only turn I didn't tap out, and that's the turn I need it. <laughs> yeah. I think it's easy. At least he's trying to make it look easy. So now we will have to sack our Doom Traveler, assuming Jeremy attacks, which if I were Jeremy, I, I would do that. Hard not to. Yeah. He should probably shouldn't ship with the Vexing Devil, though, because that just offers Josh the decision of whether or not he wants to trade. Uh, Knight of Infamy for Vexing Devil, basically. So Josh is going to sacrifice that Doom Traveler. He's going to give himself a 1 1 Spirit Token, give that guy protection from red. Spirit Token is going to jump in front of the Noble. And he's going to keep his life at six. And we, of course, know that last card in Josh's hand is a Boros Reckoner. So Josh is going to take a draw step here. He draws another Cartel Aristocrat. And I think you just got to keep pressing on with that uh, with that champion of the Parish. Yeah, champion's big enough to just keep on attacking at this point. I, I'm just playing the Reckoner. What's the worst that could happen? Volcanic Strength. Actually, that's the worst that could happen. That is but actually, the, yeah, that's the worst one. What else could happen? <laughs> And we know that Jeremy does have three copies in his deck. I actually think Two I just left. saw one in his hand. No. I think I did. Yeah. Really? I think I did. I don't want to swear to it, but, you know. I, I admit that of the cards in Jeremy's deck, Volcanic Strength is not the one that I've you know, trained my eye to, to pick out of a crowd, but... Ash Zealot. Ash Zealot? I can't Brim, that Ash Zealot, Brimstone, okay. Volley, Vexing Devil. Oh, Wrong. Woo. Wrong. I feel better now. It is you the can't get a, You can't get a card's artwork by me if you tried. Oh, Can't be done. Aggressive. He blocks the Vexing Devil. Interesting. All right. And there's your Boros Reckoner. Yep. Now, if he top decks a, a Volcanic Strength, I'll know about it. That's not that's it. A land. That's, that's a not it. That's strength. not. That's not one. It's flavor check. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Josh has basically stabilized this board. The only thing he can die to is the Brimstone Bomb. Yeah. Oh. It always gets you. It does. It really does. Every time I lose them on a red, it's their last card in hand is just a brimstone. And ball. you're always hoping Every it's time. not. I'm always hoping it's not, and it always is. On the upside, he is at six life. Very key different from five life in that it's not it's not five. That's the yes, thing again. Now, if you guys are here listening at home, five <laughs> is different than six. For those of you who are not, not aware, five still different than six. I like to break it down for the people. I mean, if you're Jeremy, all joking aside, I mean, you definitely got some decision need to make here. Yeah. He's at 12. Um, things are getting worse. Reckoner is here now. You know, he's got cards that he can play with. This is going to come across here. He attacks? He's like, dead. Yeah. Block. Block. Like. So that's going to die. And I'm, I'm a Minotaur deal. wizard. Get yeah. out of here. <laughs> and I'm going to deal. Yeah, that's dead. And I'm going to deal three to you. Nine. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight. Aristocrat in the hand. It is nine. That, that's that it, nice. unless Jeremy uses that Brimstone Volley on uh, one of Josh's creatures. Or if he just chooses to play Vexing Devil and Ash Zealot. So there's your Ash Zealot. Let's play his guys. This plan doesn't seem to be going anywhere, though, because what can he draw now? Like, there's yeah. no spell that deals six. Josh is going to be like, yeah, you got a bunch of dudes. Anything else? No? All well, right. the thing is, is that by letting that Vexing Devil resolve, the thing that makes this a little bit difficult is you're going to see Champion of the Parish here is that Volcanic Strength is still an out now. Because Volcanic true. Strength on the Vexen Devil will end it. If he doesn't have to bust the, uh, the if he busts the wrong guy, that's fair. Yep. Yep. So we got a 6-6 six, six champion of the Parish. And he can't attack for a bunch here, but Vexen Devil standing tall as a four as a as a excuse me, four three. Get out of here. Yep. Seven. What you got? Is he willing to take it? If he takes it and he's putting himself to his draw step as Cartel Aristocrat will just straight up kill him next turn. Yeah. But he's already to his draw step, so that seems fine. Yeah. Looks like he is going to go down to two. Looks like no block have been declared. And now it is the ultimate sweat. We got a two outer, folks. That's sacred, a sacred boundary. boundary. That is. It's probably not going to do the trick. Well, uh, I guess we attack. We can't not attack. Yeah, let's see what happens. I have this feeling that Josh is going to block. I have a feeling. I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Josh is probably going to block the damage that might kill him. Aristocrat here. And... Right here. Right there. Before first strike. I'm going to lose this guy to make this guy pro red. Yep. That guy's going to bite the dust. I'm not going to take any damage. And 
You can get me to one, but one is not none. And Jeremy shows him Brimstone Volley and concedes the game. Something that may, seem not, may not seem like a big deal to a lot of people, but it is. Brimstone Volley is not in every red deck. Yes. That is a big card to know. Yes. Uh, if you are if you know your opponent doesn't have Brimstone Volley, then five seems like a very safe life total. Yes. If you know your opponent does, five seems like the worst of all life totals. Yes. And I'm sure it will change the way that Josh plays this third game. Yes. Having that information now and thinking to himself, it is a good thing that I was not at five or I would be yep. dead. It is a very good thing. So Joshua Tannen does tie this game, oh, excuse me, tie this matchup up. One to one with the Aristocrats versus Mono Red by Jeremy, and we are going to go to a third one. That was a pretty imp impressive game from the Aristocrats, to be honest. You know, Jeremy had a fine draw, a lot of pressure, uh, but Josh outpaced him very quickly. Yeah. Uh, really, he was just, you know, risking death to the uh, the blast to the sorry volcanic strengths. Uh, in sideboarding, he may be considering you know, shifting down gears now that he's on the draw, uh, leaning on some of that removal a little heavier. So let's see exactly how this is going to go. Again, I, I think this matchup might just be die roll dependent, honestly. It may be. Uh, I don't know. The, the Aristocrats deck definitely has a lot more play to it, and it can you know, it can convert spell-like hands way better than the red deck does, I think. Yeah. Which has always been my issue with uh, modern era red decks. Those hands where you just draw, like, three spells or four spells, and you're like, yeah, whatever. Like, I died. Yeah. I didn't do anything. Nothing I did was important or relevant enough. I just lost. Yeah, every card's designed to get you know somewhere between like three and six damage, and ideally, and if you just get three with all of them, it doesn't <laughs> work out. Yeah, it's not exactly ideal. I would agree with that. Well, what can you do, right? Yes, I mean, it's definitely up to Jeremy here. He's got to have an aggressive draw. He's got to start off with, you know, a strong Kirk Noble or a Rakdos Cackle, and really just start giving the beatdowns right away. There's yeah. just nothing, nothing else to say. It's got to start early. It's got to start off. Same token, I'm sure Josh is hoping to keep seven cards and not play a uh, shock land on turns one, two, and three. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So game three, we are about to be underway here. Jeremy going to take a look at his opening seven. If you guys are just joining us, SCG Live here in Las Vegas. You guys can join the conversation with us on Twitter at SCG Live, hashtag SCG Vegas. As we do see Jeremy actually taking a mulligan for Change once. Of pace. Tweet with Glenn and I if you'd like to. Glenn at Secluded Glenn. I know he loves a Twitter. I do love the Twitters. Me at Cedric A. Phillips. I, I, I'm fine with the Twitters. I'm a fan of the Twitters. I should tweet more, honestly. I feel guilty that I don't. Please yeah, do so many things. Yeah. Like food pics, like, I'm so lazy. I can't take pictures of my food. I'm it's, just hungry. You know, it's it's something I'm, I'm starting to do now. Yeah, yep. Yeah. All right, all right. You know, beforehand, I, I'll tell you what happened. There's a reason I started doing this. Okay. So, I... Little little personal information. I went out on a date a couple weeks ago. Yes, I did. You dapper date. I tell you <laughs> what. And while I was on this date, I told I told the person I was out with, I was like, you know, I do a lot of traveling for a living, do all this commentary stuff. She's like, that sounds really awesome. Show me some pictures of where you've been. And I couldn't. Damn. I could not do that because I've been all over the United States, been to Europe like five times, Japan once. I have no pictures of any of them. Yep. So I've decided that's embarrassing. That I have no pictures of all these great places I've gone to. So that I'm just a picture psychopath. I just take pictures of everything always. And I'm taking pictures of like all the insane food I eat, all the places I go, the Air Force I'm in, so I can actually like remember the things that I've done with my life 20 years from now. Well, that I sounds think, dangerous. I know, I know. <laughs> I think you should do the same though. Because uh, we do see Jeremy keep six cards. He has a strong Kirk Noble. It's a good start. What's okay, Josh got? Trouble. Josh has a Godless Shrine, passes the turn back. Looks like a sh another Shockland heavy hand for Josh. I know he has Knight of Infamy. I'm not sure what else he's got rolling. Well, what he's got is a Noble coming at him. That's what he's got. All right, 19. What's up? Yep. Take it right on the chin. Here comes a Mountain. And here comes... I see Lingering Souls, I think. Two Knight of Infamies and a Cartel Aristocrat. Yep, that's the that's Josh's hand. Hey, good eye, Sniper. Zing. You shoot, I'll run. Rakdos Cackler, Vexing Devil. Coheed and Cambria references? I can do it all. <laughs> I can actually do it all. You are a renaissance man, sir. Champion of the Parish, the draw here for Josh. Uh, I like that draw nice. It lets us play our, our Shockland tapped and just drop champion. If Jeremy wants to waste some time and tempo uh, eliminating it with a removal spell, that's cool. If not, uh, we'll just grow it into a sweet creature. Yeah. And there's your champion. 
we'll see if this one, if either of these lands are going to come untapped. Uh, you know, this is something that we've talked about many times when, when broadcasting these tournaments. Those Ravnica Duel lands, they are not free. Yeah. As good as they are, those two life matter in matchups like this. Yeah, about, about a year ago, everyone learned the value of two life when they printed Jataxian for them. Yeah. So uh, I'd, I'd like to think that you know, there aren't people operating under the auspices that two life is free, but I would also like them to not think that you know, they're guilt gates. Yeah. Two, two life's not free, but it's worth it sometimes. Yeah, you got to find that healthy balance. We do see Jeremy come across for more damage. Sacred Foundry coming into play on tap. That right. is, I, I, I think I do too, and there it is. <laughs> to be fair, Minotaur stinks from miles away. Yeah. So. Minotaur Wizard is here. Josh is going to draw planes. <laughs> that man comes into play untapped without even dealing yeah. him a point. That of must damage. be nice. That's really got to be nice. But what can he do about a Reckoner? We have a Knight of Infamy. That, that's a pretty good against Reckoner. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not, it's not the best, but, but... It's something. It is something. He's going to have to find an Orzhov Charm or something to deal with that thing, right? Yeah, the Stat. Aristocrats has a lot of cards that deal with Reckoner. One of the reasons the deck was good was it was like one of the better Reckoner decks, uh, especially in the Mirror, but he does not have any of those cards available to him right now, and he can't afford to start battling with Knight, yeah. uh, which is its primary functionality as a Reckoner. Josh is going to play a Godless Shrine. He's just going to pass the turn back, it looks like. I mean, no sense in attacking, so. Uh, I mean, if he's not going to block, is attacking with champion so bad? Like, if he, he'll take three damage and kill the Reckoner if he blocks, right? I, I think that, you know, if, if champion's attacking there, Jeremy can't take three, or take three damage fast enough. Yeah, I'm sure he takes three damage. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, if the champion doesn't block, then what's the point anyway? But Hellrider, zing. That might change a few things. Yeah. Because we're going to see four triggers go in the stack here. Josh is going to go down to seven, and a lot of his blocks are not looking good right now. He can uh, he can get in front of the two two power guys, and actually no, that that nobles a three three. So at this ignore point, that comment. At this point, Josh has to block to try and draw Blasphemous Act if it's in his deck, but I guess it's not because it just extended his hand. Yeah, he just scooped yeah. it up. I mean, I'll, I'll, you can basically I mean perfect mulligan yeah. for Jeremy that game. Starts with noble, goes into Cackler. Next turn, Boros Reckoner into Hell Rider. And that's part of the things that make the red deck so very good. Yep. You know, that that a draw just like that, followed with a burn spell or two, is difficult for any deck to beat. If the game's where it doesn't do that, or when it's on the defensive, is where it looks pretty poor. But when it's on the offensive like that, even if with six cards, it's a tough deck to beat. Yeah, I know that there aren't a lot of decks that can beat draws like that. I think one of the reasons that Jund has become a popular choice, especially the Arboralt versions, is you know, give it, it gets some resiliency against those draws when you've got access to the early, more early mana XL, multiple removal spell. 